Welcome back to another edition of Reality Check, your weekly deep dive into all things unscripted television. This week we're diving into The Voice and The X Factor, and I am here with American Idol Season 6 standout Melinda Doolittle. Melinda, how's it going today? Oh, I'm sorry, I totally just fell asleep <laughs> thinking about The Voice and The X Factor this week. This is The Voice. Boom, 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 boom. I, I don't know, understand because good. it's such a talented group of... Yes, they're so good. It's such a good group. And then this week it was like, just nothing really quite worked. Well, Matthew worked. I mean, let's just be honest here. Shall we go positive and talk about the best performance of the week? I think hands down, he won the week. I've got to say right. though, even him, those opening couple of lines, I okay. know he's going for vulnerability. It makes you feel good. So the fact that his voice kind of flaked away like a croissant being torn in half kind of worked. But that won't scare me. but he wasn't quite hitting those notes. The very beginning kind of did throw me off, but that boy is just electric. I just want to know. He brought something new to the stage that I had been missing for two hours. Yeah. Like I just, I don't know. <laughs> Plus it may have been that I found out he was of legal age. I don't know what it was, but it was an exciting <laughs> performance for me. I have to ask, okay, like I'm a happily married man. When I sing this song, like I'm thinking about my future wife. That didn't work for me on any <laughs> level. It didn't like, didn't like ping anything for me. Your future love, your future life, your, your future wife. But did it work for you as a single lady? It didn't really work, but I mean, <laughs> I, I think the 21 worked better than the singing to my future wife for me personally, well, but. <laughs> We're getting really honest here today I, on Reality Check. I, I think the future wife thing would have worked if they just said it once. Finding that future wife, not gonna be a problem for you, man. It was like sledgehammer, you future know, when, when all they needed was like, I don't know. I don't know tools, so I'm not really gonna. Yeah. <laughs> My older Bad brother is just cool. watching this, shaking his head like, you can't come up with anything, <laughs> a mallet, anything. See, that was good, mallet. Mallet. A mallet, yeah. They used a yeah. sledgehammer when they needed a mallet. <laughs> let's move, let's move along. <laughs> did you have a second favorite this week? I did, and it was actually kind of a close second for me. Tess Ann sang her tail off. I know that you weren't that happy that she was singing a Gladys Knight song and it was, you know, kind of a typical choice right. coming from Adam for her. It's hard to kind of get to that level, but you can't take away from the fact that she just sang that song. I think my second favorite this week might be like sort of a tie between Caroline and James, neither of whom I love, loved. Oh, I liked Caroline's performance. The song was a too. little bit sort of light and airy and dreamy. She probably also needed to really shake things up this week, and I think her placement in the bottom three spoke that loud and clear. But was that really a bottom three performance? I don't think so. No, not at all. Not at all. Caroline, for me, is flawless. Like, I mean, her voice is actually flawless. She doesn't mess up. It sounds gorgeous. What we want to hear is just something a little different, something changed up, maybe a different emotion in a song. And also, I don't understand, why was CeeLo dogging her vocal? I will say that the song, you know, at, at some point, seemed like it was going to, you know, overpower you. Was he mad that she picked her own song? I mean, this is a man, no matter what someone does on stage, someone could throw an old shoe at him and he'd be like, I commend you for throwing of the old shoe. <laughs> I'm thinking that he was like using reverse psychology and actually trying to help her. This is the only thing I can think of because for some reason, it's like people are just pissed at CeeLo and not voting for his artists. When you insist on something, you know, you can open up really wide if you wanted to. I just think he's grasping at straws, trying to make people feel something for his contestants so they <laughs> vote. You you may be grasping at straws, trying to explain his insane critique. I Caroline Pennell saved in the instant 
instant save on the voice. Congratulations. James Wolpert, I know you were not a fan of that performance of Without You. And I can't even believe I'm even remotely excited about the umpteenth performance of Without You on a reality singing competition. But I kind of dug his sort of like nerd rock take on it. You, okay. I like James. I do. His pitch, he needs help. It's jarring in the middle of a song when he's like, I can't live! When Christina was like trying to say, At the end you went a little astray with, with the pitch, but you had me the whole time. She was trying so hard to find something good to say. Christina is trying so hard to not allow the general public to be like, she's bitchy. When she's honest, people hate that because if you're a woman, apparently you can't have a strong, honest, forthright opinion. So she sort of dances right. all around it. Of course, she did call Will Satan. Like up there on the chair, I was like, the red jacket, I thought it was Satan for a second. Sometimes it just slips out of her. We also saw a couple of front runners really stumble. You know, I love Jackie Lee. Like I adore her and I'm gonna buy every one of her records, but that Zed song and her, was but, like, I don't know, you know, peanut butter and gasoline. It just, it, <laughs> it was not two great tastes that tasted great together. I didn't need Chase It wasn't, it wasn't great, especially the first half of it. Like she yeah. just looked uncomfortable and, and scared. Love is tragedy, why are you my remedy? She's 16 years old. She's still figuring her voice out. And I know that because she has owned the last two weeks that we assume that she is a consummate professional, but there still have to be things that she has to learn. And I, I just don't think that she was quite ready to like pull back like that, like Christina was really wanting her to do. And so it scared her. Put it out there and then pull it back. Yeah. And that's something that I think relies on breathing and Calming. Maybe Christine is a really stern judge. Maybe she's like an Eastern European figure skating judge. If I don't connect with this song, then I could be in trouble. I could be in trouble. I could be in trouble. Flats. She's like, we're not going to be doing yoga when I get backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, was that your back? That's great. <laughs> I could be in trouble. The other person who faltered this week was Cole. He may have been struggling with his in-ear a little bit, but he chose to not sing the melody on the chorus, and then there were like long gaps where he wasn't doing anything. Let's end on a positive note with the voice. Okay. The group performances, two in particular. First of all, from the time Christina started walking on that stage, that walk, I mean, just fierce, honey, fierce. It's on the stage. It was phenomenal. Like, it almost made me believe in group performances again. For like 30 seconds. <laughs> That's not easy to do. Not far behind it was Tessanne and Caroline on Royals. Caroline's voice was just as strong as Tess Ann's, even though it's got more of a lilting quality power-wise, they matched each other and they just, their harmonies were great. They sounded terrific. Let me live that fantasy. All right, let's jump over to X Factor for a second. Melinda, I know we've been a little rough on X Factor this season and they've kind of been asking for it, but let's go positive. Who did you love this week? Lily. Hello, Lily. She sang the heck out of that song. I know you've got a lot of strength left. There was just this much restraint to the whole song where you're just like, ooh. And it wasn't Maxwell's version and it wasn't Kate Bush's version, which is also no. incredible and you should look it up on iTunes because it is yes, great. Yes, sir, I will. I should be talking, but I can't stop thinking, yeah. I thought she was fantastic and when Simon was like, <laughs> should be worried for tomorrow night. Maybe Lily, definitely what? alone up. I have not been agreeing with him pretty much all season. So I just kind of take it with a grain of salt at this point. Lily sang her tail off and that dress. That woman made a couple of babies and she's 54 and she's oh, in that dress. Right, like, not during the song. I totally thought you meant during the song. I no, don't know what no. where my brain went, so sorry. <laughs> Got it. Yes, prior to In the singing. past. <laughs> in the past, she had a couple of babies. Speaking of making babies, 
I loved Alex and Sierra this week too. That's a ter- no, I'm not gonna, that's a terrible transition. They're just so in love with each other. We the night to the best song ever. I love them and Josh Levi just for the fact that they take risks. We know every line, never can remember. Even if it doesn't completely work every week, they at least try something new with every song that they're given. We dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? While we're on the subject of X Factor, um, because he continues to try to make them happen. You know the expression, you save the best till last? Yes. It's Restless Road. Thoughts on their countrified version of Coldplay's Fix You? Are we really gonna? We, because I thought we were ending on a positive note. My bad. Okay. Uh, uh, the, mm. That was awful. Let's just be honest. The tracks completely overpowered them. But when their vocals came oh, in, Lord like at the Jesus, very end. Oh, Lord Jesus, when you end, could hear them. <laughs> I'm not opposed to putting groups together. I'm not opposed to a country group with three boys in it. I'm not opposed to any of it on paper. I will try. I'm just opposed to not singing on pitch. Listening to you guys, it still has to be even tighter for harmony, everything. That was like the kindest way of putting that. That's... It was like nails in a blender. Simon gave them a standing Ovation. I thought he was getting up to run out of the room out of pure shame and embarrassment. How can I ever believe you again, Simon? How? He may not have run out of the room, but his credibility did. <laughs> that was pretty good. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. Oh, go ahead and pat yourself on the back. I'm Haley Steinfeld and you're watching ENTV. Hi, my name is Kieran and Shipka and you're watching ENTV. Aubrey Plaza, ENTV. I just touched it with my mouth, sorry.